So another thing you can do with service connections is that you can share them across projects. So if you have a central team um, that maybe is providing a central resource for auditing reasons, for example, um, you can then take the service connection. Um, if I come here to security um, and you can give it to access to another project. So I have this project is called public demos. I have another project called end to end governance demo. Um, and it has access to this service connection. Um, I know it's not used at the moment because there's no permitted pipelines uh, to use it. So service connection doesn't mean that credential is automatically available to every project um, or every or code project in your um, Azure DevOps project. If I come here, um, sorry, go back to service connections and I think this particular resource group um, you'll see that uh, specific pipelines have access to it. So you have to grant access to the pipeline once. It's not going to ask you every time. So sometimes I get the question from customers, how would I share a service connection across organizations? Um, so I usually respond with, why would you want to do that? Um, usually it's for legacy reasons. They've been using Team Foundation Server or Azure DevOps for a while. Um, anyway, it's I want to explain why you can't do that out of the box with service connections. So a organization in Azure DevOps is a logical boundary and it's a governance boundary. So you just can't really push it there, right? It's also different users, et cetera. Um, and the service connections themselves are really scoped to that organization. Um, it's important to understand as well that when you do that, those credentials are in Azure DevOps. And so if you did have the requirement to add uh, the same service connection or like credentials to various um, multiple DevOps organizations, you have the challenge of having to manage uh, multiple copies of that. So one way to get around that is actually to use Azure Key Vault. So you'll see that um, in this particular project, this library, it's integrated with Azure Key Vault. And the, fa the reason why the credentials are here um, as variables and not as a service connection has to do with the fact that um, I'm using Terraform on the CLI, and this is how Terraform um, expects to receive the credentials. So this is kind of a special use case. Um, nevertheless, it's important to understand that you can share credentials in this way. So my pipeline, this particular pipeline also requires the credentials to be passed in this way as environment variables. Um, and by the way, under the hood, that's what many uh, pipeline tasks are doing, YAML tasks are doing, but. Um, so you would still need to duplicate a, duplicate a service um, connection so this one, um, you can see that it is called MSDN sub reader service principle, <laughs> the um, governance demo. Um, and so this particular uh, service principle, it just only has read access. Um, I think somewhere else I have one that's even scoped smaller just to Key Vault, uh, but you would have to duplicate that credential. So it should be a read only credential that has access to the Key Vault. Um, and then if you had to rotate the secrets uh, for those credentials, you would just do it once in Key Vault. Um, and that would kind of um, mitigate that problem if you needed to share uh, across organizations. Um, maybe it's also worth mentioning here that the service connection under the hood, it will help you rotate those credentials as well. So you don't have to worry about something not working suddenly. Uh, if you're using Key Vault, actually, um, you can enter an expiration date for your credentials, your secrets, and then you can link up the Key Vault to an event hub so that, you know, maybe 90 days, 30 days, et cetera, before they expire, um, you can do notifications to email, I don't know, chat or whatever. Um, and so there are ways to mitigate that as well. A little bit more that you have to sort of tinker with, uh, but in some ways kind of also more secure.